Hi everyone, this is Teresa from Tarot by T. I'm sorry for the delay in these last four readings, uh, last four signs. I had some an emergency situation come up at home that had to be taken care of, and I had to stop the readings to take care of it, so now I'm doing them better late than never. Um, so thank you for your patience, and I hope you enjoy the reading. Hi Sagittarius, this is Teresa from Tarot by T. Welcome to October. Um, so this month, we start the month off with a full moon in uh, Aries, which is favorable to your sign. And then um, on the 13th, Mercury goes to uh, retrograde. And then we have a new moon in Libra, which is also favorable to your sign. And Pluto goes direct on the 3rd or 4th of October. I think it's the 4th. So let's see what the cards say for October for Sagittarius. What does Sagittarius need to know? and relationships for the month of October 2020. What is coming up for Sag for October 2020? What does Sag need to know about love and relationships for October 2020? Okay, let's see what we get. The star. The two of wands. The page of wands. The high priestess. The queen of cups. The lovers. The five of pentacles. The Six of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, and the Three of Swords. And the card at the bottom of the deck is the Two of Pentacles. If I can hold it, <laughs> if it'll stay in my hand. Okay, so let's see what's, what, what's going on here. So we have the Star. The Star is about um, a wish or a dream that's going to be fulfilled that you're working on fulfilling a goal or a dream the star gives hope it's telling you that whatever your plans are in a relationship because you have this two of wands here crossing it so you might be contemplating a partnership maybe you're um, wondering about the future of a partnership or wondering if you should partner with someone um, it promises to be Fulfilling in the future, it's just that it's going to take some time before you'll realize the full uh, results of this partnership. So don't get discouraged if there's some delays. Because the star, even though it brings hope, it's that hope is like d down the road. It's not immediate. So you have the page of wands in your past and the high priestess. So you might have heard some news or there might be things, maybe you're work working on something behind the scenes. Um, there are things going on behind the scenes because the high priestess represents things that are hidden. And it also represents that you may have to tap in to your intuition. So it could mean, for some of you, it could mean um, you've just started a relationship because the page of wands could mean the beginning stages of a relationship with another fire sign, possibly. And maybe there's, for some reason, you don't want to announce it to the public yet. So the High Priestess is like you're keeping things hidden. You're keeping things quiet for now. Maybe you want to see where it's going to go. The other, high priest, the other thing the High Priestess could talk about is about trusting your intuition. Like you may have certain feelings or hunches about what's going on in your life right now. Trust the, that, those hunches. Trust that intuition. Especially because the Queen of Cups is coming up in the future. And the Queen of Cups could be a water sign. It could be someone that you're dealing with who's very intuitive, very creative. But it could also mean that you're needing to tap into those energies yourself. You're needing to trust your intuition. Follow those hunches. Um, I'm seeing two queens here. The Queen of Wands and the Queen of Cups. So I'm thinking, And then you have the lovers in the near future. So the lovers is, it could be a strong uh, relationship opportunity coming up. 
either you're in a relationship and but you're trying to make a decision about it because the lovers always involves a choice a choice between two paths so for some of you who are just dating you might be dating two people and wondering you know which one do I choose I have to leave one behind because you have the three of swords here so something has to be severed for you to pursue this other alternative so one thing has to end and then you take off on this new path for others it could be um, that you're trying to decide do I stay or do I go you could be in a relationship that might be going through some challenges and you're deciding you know do I ride this out is there hope is there a future here or do I choose something else? Do I go down a different path? Um, in describing the people that you're dealing with, the Queen of Cups can represent someone, like I said, it could be a water sign, but it could also be someone who is very artistic, very creative, very intuitive, uh, very sensitive. You have to be careful how you talk, especially as a Sag. Sag has a tendency to tell it like it is, and you might hurt the feelings of this person. Um, in your, and then you have the Queen of Wands here, which is someone who's very outspoken, very confident, knows what she wants and goes after it. And this could be male or female, these cards. Um, but this person is, um, uh, likes to juggle, can juggle both home and family life and work and career. She's very ambitious, very driven. She doesn't waste time. You know, she goes for what she wants. She knows how to get what she wants. She's very up front. She's a leader, basically. And basically the fire signs, all of them, especially Sag too, are all really good leaders because you don't procrastinate. You make up your mind you're going to do something and you do it. You're up front. You know, you, you tell it like it is. You have something to say, you say it. You don't hem and haw or, you know, beat around the bush or wait for people to figure out what you want. You just come out and say, this is what I want. This is what I need. You know, you're very up front. And, you, and that's, I admire that about the fire signs. Now you have the Five of Pentacles here in your negative thinking sector or your fears sector. You might be feeling cut off from someone. I feel like you're feeling a little bit isolated. Maybe you're going through a depression because of all this social distancing we're all going through. Like we, you can't really, because you know, fire signs like to be around people. They like to socialize. Um, they're not really happy just hanging at home all the time. So you might be feeling cut off from the people you love, feeling like you're going through a depression, maybe even struggling with financial issues. Um, and that's got you down. You have, in your environment, you have the Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles is about, uh, it has two meanings. One could be that there's an imbalance in the give and take in a relationship. So maybe you're the one paying for everything. If you're in a relationship where you're paying, you're footing the bill, or you feel like you're giving more than you're receiving. Uh, it could be a financial thing where you're spending the money and you know your partner's not spending the same amount of money and you're feeling that uh, a little bit of a pinch because they're not contributing. Or it could be that you are doing work that involves helping others that are less fortunate, so some type of social work or something where you're caring for the people who can't take care of themselves. So that could be part of what you're doing. Um, in your wish fulfillment sector, you have the Queen of Wands. So that means um, you're prepared to go, the, you know, to go after what you want. You have a goal. You have a, this, a definite goal of what you want to achieve. And this month, you're going to have to tap into that leadership ability. You're going to have to take action. You can't sit around waiting. Like here, in the Two of Wands, this is a person who's waiting. You know, you've put some energy out there and you're waiting for the results. You're waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, with the Queen of Wands energy, you have to make something happen. She makes things happen. She doesn't wait. And then as an outcome, you have this Three of Swords. That means that this month, you're going to have to cut some things out from your schedule. Um, because you can't do it all. A lot of times, Sagittarius, of all the signs... You usually, a lot of times the Sag will take on more than they can handle because of the Jupiter influence. Your ruler is Jupiter. And Jupiter is very optimistic. Jupiter is about abundance and excess. So sometimes Sages have this problem of, I want to do everything. And then you get overloaded and you're like, I, 
I don't know how I'm going to do it all, you know. So you may have taken on too many projects, or if it's a relationship issue, you might have too many irons in the fire. And especially with this Two of Pentacles here, that was at the bottom of the deck, that's about juggling. You're juggling. You have a lot of plates spinning. And at some point this month, you may realize, you know, I can't keep this up. I can't keep. I have. I don't have the energy for all of this. I have to decide where I want to go. What's most, most important? What do I need to keep and what do I need to cut out? Because that's what the Three of Swords is about. It's about cutting away what's no longer working. So if something's not giving you the results that you're wanting and it's costing you more effort than it's giving you a return on investment, you know, or then you may need to say, you know what, I need to cut this out and just focus on the things that are really bringing me joy, that are really um, giving me back, you know, so I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Like if I'm putting, especially in a relationship, you want to give to the people that, re that, that, re that give back to you. So if you're in a relationship and you're giving your love to someone and they're not appreciating it, maybe you need to cut them out. Or if you're in a career situation where you're doing all this work and you're not getting rewarded or you're not getting any raises or money or co properly compensated, maybe you need to cut that out and just focus on what's really important. So this month with the lovers, you're going to be making some choices about partnerships and about your path. You know, what do I, sh what do I keep? What do I leave? What's the most valuable? And these are important decisions because once you make that choice with the lovers, you can't go back if you decide to change your mind later. You can't say, well, I chose this and now it was a mistake, I want to go back. You have to really, um, you have to know what you want and choose, just make a choice. Um, but know that it's a very serious choice. It could be even a life-changing decision because you're, you're leaving a lot behind to, to follow. You know, it's like you're following this one path and you're cutting out. Whatever you're cutting out is going to be gone. You know, you're closing the door on that. That's why you have to trust your intuition. To, you know, take time out to meditate and, and look for that answer. You know, when you, when you pray, that's like talking to, to God, to the universe. When you meditate, you're waiting for the answer. And that answer is coming up from the collective consciousness, you know. Um, so wait for that guidance. A lot of times the star can, re can mean receiving spiritual guidance. Um, but the star brings hope. So you are on a path to achieving your goals. But you have to realize where your what your limits are. Especially with all this Capricorn energy this month being activated by Mars. We have to know what is it, what is realistic? What can I realistically achieve? What are my limits? And just focus on those things that are that ha that are practical, that are doable. You know, be realistic about it. Um, it's not the time for pie in the sky endeavors. So let's see what the astrology has to say. Okay, so the full moon is happening, which happened on um, October 1st, is in your fifth house, and the sun is in your 11th house. The fifth house is the house of romance, it's the house of children, and it's the house of creative projects. So something what is completing around the full moon cycle. And this full moon cycle will be in effect this month until the next full moon, which is at the end of the month. We're going to have a, a second full moon in Taurus. But I want, I'm not going to talk about that in this reading. I'll talk about that in the next month's reading because it's so close to the November. Um, and I don't want these readings to be too long. So. so the full moon in the fifth house, there could be a relationship or romance is coming to completion or a creative project is coming to completion or some issue around children is coming to completion and the full moon is shining a light on what's going on. So where anything that's been hidden in the, in, the, in the shadows is coming up to the surface to be seen and dealt with so that you can see. And actually you have, the moon is conjunct Chiron. So there could be some healing that needs to be done around a child, an issue around children. Uh, or maybe a relationship with a child needs to be healed or a romantic partner or even a wound that's preventing you from following your true path of self-expression. Because the fifth house is about fun. Maybe you're not, are you working too hard and not having enough time for fun projects to express your creativity? Uranus um, is in your sixth house and it's shaken up your work life. And it's, Uranus has a 
an awkward aspect to the sun in the 11th house. So there could be some conflict around friendships or the groups that you belong to and your work responsibilities, your day-to-day -day -day work life. Maybe there's um, some surprising developments at work and it's, inf and it's affecting your friendships or the groups that you belong to. Um, Venus, at this full moon, Venus is in Leo and she's going to be moving uh, actually to conjunct Regulus before she moves into Virgo. She's in your ninth house. The ninth house has to do with higher education, learning, teaching. Maybe you're, start, you're deciding to um, start a teaching project or, and you're gonna, or you're getting involved in some kind of uh, publishing effort that's going to reach a global market. Um, and Venus is also trining Mars in the fifth house. So there could be some activity. There could be a new romance coming up or some new project that is, really speaks to you. So if it's not a relationship opportunity, it could be a creative project or work project that comes up that you're just loving. It's, it's like right up your alley. Um, and it has the potential to be successful because Venus on Regulus, Regulus is like... Um, you can't lose. It's the, it's like the king, you know, <laughs> energy. Um, so it's, it's, it bodes a lot of success. That's a star here. And let's see, then you have Mars in the fifth house, squaring Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter in your second house of money. So if there's any relationship issues coming up, it's going to be around money. Um, you might be dealing with someone who's either spending a lot of money, like if you're in a partnership, they're spending all your money or they're spending money and you're like, you know, we can't, we can't afford this or they're not, spe or there could be some issue. Like I said, with the six of pentacles, you're paying for everything. They're not contributing enough. Um, so there's an imbalance that needs to be worked out and you might have to learn how to compromise or create some kind of, but you have to have a talk. That's where the challenge is this month. The challenge is about money, but it's also about and that's what this card is. This is about, um, you may want to pursue something that's very creative, that speaks to your, you know, like you want to express yourself in your true way, but a part of you may feel that you're not good enough on some level. Because the second house is not only money, it's also self-esteem. What do I value? What do I value about myself? You know, and so you may have to work on your own uh, self-worth issues so that you can achieve this goal. That could be in in this crosshair this month. Um, to believe in yourself. Now, you have Saturn and Pluto. You know, your money situation is tra changing. The way you think of yourself is changing. Your values are changing. <laughs> because Pluto is a planet of transformation. Saturn is a planet of hard work. And then Jupiter brings opportunity. And Jupiter is sextile Neptune in your fourth house. So any dream that you have about home and family, you can achieve it. Um, Mercury is going through, you just have to have a realistic view because Neptune in the fourth can sometimes, you know, you have this fantasy about what home life should be or what your home should be. Maybe you have this dream home in your mind and you're trying to create that. Um, but there's a money issue. You know, you don't have the money to do everything you want to do. Mercury is in Scorpio at this full moon and it's moving, it goes retrograde on the 13th, 14th. It stations retrograde, then it moves on the 14th. In the 12th house, Mercury, um, you're keeping your thoughts to yourself because the 12th house is the hidden house. Maybe there are things you need to talk about and you're not speaking up. Could be, you know, so if you have some issue with a partner, you have to figure out a way to bring it up gently. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. So don't be afraid to speak your mind. Don't be afraid to communicate your needs during this time um, because I think it might help especially since Mercury um, I don't see it making any aspects it's still too early all the other uh, planets are late in the degrees Mercury's at three degrees so um, but at, later in the month Mercury is going to oppose Uranus and I'll get to that in the next uh, when I do the new moon it's going to before the, ne the next new moon, Mercury will oppose Uranus in your sixth house. So there's a work issue. There's something going on at work that you need to speak up about. 
Um, and there could be some surprises. That's all I can say with Uranus, because you never know what's going to happen with Uranus. Um, there could be, it could be beneficial. It could be, we don't really know. <laughs> Anything could happen. What you least expect to happen is going to happen. So let's see what happens in the new moon. So the new moon is in Libra, which is favorable to your sign. It's a sextile. And that's happening in your 11th house. So that's good for new beginnings in a, in, in friendship. Maybe there's a project that you're working with others as part of a group to help other people. Maybe it's some kind of social work ha project or some kind of u humanitarian project where you're, you know the needs of the, uh, of the many outweigh the needs of the one kind of thing. Um, and you're going to be fired up about this project because it's a new, it's a chance for a new beginning. The only thing is Mars is opposing this new moon and Mars is in your fifth house. So I feel though, um, there might be a challenge to balance the needs of your children or the needs of a relationship with whatever work you're doing in the greater world. You know, your partner may be saying, oh, you're so busy working. I never have time to see you. But I feel also it could be that you are really going to feel like I want to get the show on the road. You know, I want to get this project going. And with Mars retrograde and Mercury retrograde, things are going to slow down. And it's just not the right time It's to start something new. It's better to um, initiate something that, or go back to something you've already started and make it better. With Mars retrograde, you're not going to make the progress that you are wanting to make right away. It's going to take time. And that can be frustrating. That's the only thing. Even though, you know, it, you could be excited about this new beginning, but just know it's going to take longer and there may be some frustration because things are not happening quickly. This month, nothing is going to move quickly. So just be patient. You have to be patient this month. Um, you still have the Mars squaring Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto in the second house. So all month you're going to be having these issues around finances and around also self-worth and values. Your values are changing. So it's possible that if you're in a relationship and it's not working out the way you wanted it to, you may decide you're not interested in this partnership anymore. Or you, there may be a creative project that at the beginning it sounded great and you were all all on board and now it's just not fulfilling. So I feel like you're you're trying you're in the you're on the uh you kind of like standing between uh the crossroads of two paths and you have to decide what to keep and what to let, leave behind. The good thing is Venus will be moving out of Leo and into Virgo and it will be in your 10th house. So when Venus moves into the 10th house, you're getting along better with your in your career. It brings, you know, money and abundance to your career sector, but it also brings uh creativity. So you might be working on something that involves creativity. Especially if you're teaching something, maybe you're using your creative skills. And so you find that really enjoyable. It also, Venus is trining Saturn and it's trining Pluto. So anything new, any new work project that comes up, it has the potential to last a long time. And um, although there may be some power struggles with authority figures, because Pluto and Saturn represent authority, um, it's basically, I think, going to be um, positive. It might even bring you financial reward down the road. Um, let's see what else is happening. So then just before this new moon on the 16th of October, Mercury will oppose Uranus and there will be some kind of surprise, especially since Uranus is in Taurus, it will be some kind of financial, there'll be some surprise financial thing. Maybe there's like money coming in unexpectedly that supports your goal, supports your dream. So maybe like this imbalance gets worked out, you know, in some surprising way. Maybe your partner gets a job and starts contributing more or, you know, anything could happen. I can't even predict because it's just expect the unexpected. And especially with Mercury, there could be unexpected messages, uh, an unexpected contract that comes up. Uh, and Mercury in the 11th in the 12th house, um, maybe you even have some kind of idea that just pops out of your subconscious, you know, because Mercury, you're in his contacts, can bring innovative um, solutions or innovative um, ideas or um, you could just think of it like why didn't I think of that all of a sudden this thing you know you're struggling with a problem all of a sudden this idea pops in your head oh yeah I can do this you know it comes out of your subconscious <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you know, you just get these inspired thoughts because Mercury is, is ruled, rules our communication, but also rules our thinking. So um, you could have some unexpected ideas that were, that wind up being a solution to any challenges. So I feel like at the end of the month, like the beginning of the month with the full moon, um, there could be some tension. But towards the end of the month, there could be a surprise solution that comes up that solves whatever problems you're dealing with in an un unexpected way, in an innovative way. Maybe you're using technology or you find some, you know, you discover some new technology that helps you do your job better or there's some breakthrough, something that frees you. So expect the unexpected toward the end of the month, Sag, and you will get out of this um, depressing, you know, disconnected state. But I don't. I still think you're going to have to sever some ties this month. You're going to have to cut things away, um, especially things like don't hold on to things if they're not working. Focus your energy on what is working, and how you can build on what you have. And and if anything's draining you or sucking your energy, and not producing anything in return, I would just cut it out, and that way you can focus on what's really important. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you uh, if you liked it click on the like button or the subscribe button. If you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the description box. Um, if you if it resonated with you, please comment. Let me know. I love reading all the comments. And if you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the videos. In the meantime, Sag, thank you for your support, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.